Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me as we go through this Tax Outdoors Cricket. So let me get you started right up here at front on how to get this thing hitched onto your tow vehicle. It's gonna ride on a two inch ball and uh, the coupler here is just gonna latch down by sliding it forward once you get it down onto the ball. And these two little tabs here need to drop down into these cavities. That's gonna ensure that you've got that latched all the way down. To get it off is opposite, just pick up on the back, pull up and back, and this coupler is gonna slide back and release off the ball. A Couple other things for hooking up is gonna be your seven-way cord here. This is gonna provide all your light functions, uh, running lights, turn signals, brake lights, and also your uh, brakes are gonna be controlled by this if your vehicle is equipped with a brake controller. And then we've got your safety chains which will need to be crisscrossed and then they will be uh, clipped onto the receiver hitch of the tow vehicle. And last but not least is gonna be our breakaway cable here. Which is gonna be this guy right here, this steel cable. And it's also gonna be hooked up to the uh, tow vehicle receiver hitch and needs to be on its own clip and don't fish it through the chains or anything like that because it is designed to be yanked out of this box if you do get separated from your tow vehicle, so it needs to be able to work correctly. Now, Taxa uses a uh, manual crank tongue jack to level this thing front to rear and also to raise and lower the front end for towing. And to get your tongue, uh, tongue wheel off off of the jack, all you gotta do is pull this pin out once you get it loaded onto your tow vehicle. The wheel's gonna drop right off of there and you can store that um, anywhere you see fit. Taxa has also put a seven way storage on this thing, which is gonna be this right here. All you've gotta do is fit that in there like that, just like you're hooking it into a seven way on a tow vehicle and that's gonna keep all the water and crud out of your uh, seven way plug there. So moving back from there, we're gonna have your uh, propane uh, cover here. So if you just need to do general um, turning the uh, propane on and off, all you gotta do is loosen up these little thumb nuts on the top here, open up the top, and that's gonna give you access to your service valves on top of the propane cylinders, as well as your uh, regulator right here so you can choose which cylinder you wanna use. Um, I'm gonna pull, show you how to pull this cover off and then uh, show you some more detail on all of this. But that's how you get in and out for that. And make sure whenever you get done being inside this flap that you do get these tight, uh, that, that flap there will fly off if you don't have it well secured. So to get this off, there's gonna be a bungee cord on the bottom. All you've gotta do is unbungee it and pull this straight up and off. Once you're inside, you're gonna find your propane cylinders, two 20 pounders. Uh, these can be either exchanged or refilled, whatever you so choose to do. But to get these off, all you've gotta do is make sure your service valves are closed undo your gas line here. Loosen up the wing nut here so where we can tip our T-bar out and then that's gonna give us our propane cylinder. Again, this can be taken and exchanged or refilled and brought back. Anytime you've got a propane cylinder, do make sure it's in the upright position for your safety. So to put it back in is just gonna be the opposite. Just gonna get it tipped back in here. Get our T-bar fished back into the uh, hole there on it, on the cylinder. Tighten our wing nut back down. Reconnect our service hose. And then we can turn our service valve back on if we're gonna be using that cylinder. Now. Uh, this does have an auto changeover regulator. So basically what that means is if you have both of your propane cylinders turned on and your uh, regulator pointed to one cylinder or the other, it's gonna use whichever cylinder this is pointing to first, and then it's gonna automatically start pulling propane gas from the other cylinder when it becomes empty. Uh, so then you're never gonna really know how much you have left. So we recommend that you use one cylinder. So select your cylinder, use it until it runs empty, shut it off, then open the other one and then select that cylinder and use it. And you can go get the other one exchanged or refilled um, 
at, on your own time, and that way you know how much gas you've got going on. Uh, but other than that, there's not a whole lot to propane, so that pretty much covers that. Um, so let me uh, bring you over here onto the uh, side of the tongue, show you a few things over here that Tax is using. Uh, first off, you've got all your identification labels here. Uh, we're gonna have your tire size with tire pressures, uh, some weight, a weight sticker, and then we've also got some information here from Taxa with your VIN and some other weights. Now, Taxa has started installing the auto brake on all of their trailers, and uh, this is basically a tra trailer mounted brake control. So now your tow vehicle doesn't have to have one, and it's all controlled by the auto brake right here that's mounted on the trailer. Uh, so it's a pretty cool device, works really well. Um, it comes with a little key fob thing for doing some setting adjustments, things like that. But check it out if you have any questions about it. Auto brake, um, A-U-T-O-W brake. Um, four corner stabilizers here that are gonna, you're gonna have a, a crank handle. These are gonna be for stabilizing only, not for lifting or leveling the trailer. That's gonna be done with the axle and the uh, tongue jack for leveling. And those are then run to the ground just to stabilize. Moving up from there, we've got your outside shower. This is gonna be a quick connect style shower. So it's just got a quick connect hose here. It's gonna hook into here. You just push this collar back. Then you're gonna push that in and then release the collar and that's gonna lock it on. Then you've got hot cold water here and uh, you can use that however. And comes with a spray nozzle. After you're done using this, shut all your water off. When you remove this, I do recommend draining this hose out. This coiled hose will hang onto a lot of water. So just hold it up, open the spray nozzle up and let all the water drain out of it before you put it back inside your trailer for storage. Moving over onto the side here, we've got a couple things. We've got your Truma vent. This is gonna be for the Truma water heater. Um, and furnace, it's gonna, it says hot on it, it's gonna get hot anytime it's being used, it's gonna be producing uh, heat, so cautious there that you don't burn yourself, don't cover it, put anything over anything like that so everything can ventilate properly. Just below that, we've got your uh, city water connection. So to get hooked up to that, you just have to unscrew that there. And you're gonna hook directly into with a water hose through a pressure regulator. Now you can see Taxa says 125 PSI max a lot of pressure um, we like to see no more than about 55 but totally up to you if you stick within their standards there of 125 max shouldn't have any issues uh, moving down from that we've got your 30 amp power connection so to get this thing hooked up let me show you here I'm gonna have three prongs here uh, two of them are somewhat flat and then we've got the one L shape Side of the uh, camper is gonna have the same there. All you've gotta do is match up those two L-shaped prongs, push that together, give it a little turn to the right, and then use your uh, lock ring here to lock it back down to the trailer to keep it nice and secured. Um, this is gonna be your air conditioning unit. You can see it sticks out on the exterior of the trailer. It does come with a cover that just slides on and then snaps. It's got a couple snaps on it all the way around that keeps it in place. Keep the cover on it when you're traveled. That's gonna protect it from any kind of road debris or anything like. Freeze. Did you get a phone call or something? Uh, okay, let's start with the air conditioner. Okay. So this is gonna be the exterior side part of your air conditioner here. Um, it does come with a cover on it to be put, put on uh, and travel and storage. I do recommend you use it. It just slides on and then has a couple of snaps around the air conditioner to keep it in place. It's gonna protect this unit from any kind of road debris or anything like that, so it continues to work as needed. Um, and it, it will be normal to see water drip off of this as any air conditioner produces a, a condensation. It's gonna drip um, exterior here. I'll show you how to use all the controls on that once we get to the inside. So if we go right here underneath the trailer, I'll show you a couple things. Um, we're gonna have our gray water drain which is gonna be this guy right here. It's already set up to hook straight up to a gray water drain hose. So this can run off to the dump or into a port of tote or something like that and uh, be drained. Since it is just gray water, you can leave this valve open all the time or you can fill the tank up and open and close as needed. But pretty simple there to drain everything off. Moving back from there, we're gonna have your uh, wheel and tire um, 
ID tag kind of thing here. It says check wheel lugs. Uh, talks about making sure everything is torqued here. Taxa puts on the check 10, 25, um, and 50 miles to make sure everything is tightened to manufacturer specifications. And then again, you'll want to make sure these are uh, have the proper air pressure in them. Taxa says 50 PSI on the tires. And we pretty much torque everything to 100 foot-pounds, make sure they're good and tight. All right, moving back, we've got a uh, solar plug here on the side. This is gonna be so you can hook up a uh, portable solar panel. Just plugs in and then provides a solar charge to your 12 volt battery to give you some dry camping options there for 12 volt power. And this cap right here, you remove this and then you can put a water hose in here, fill up your onboard fresh water tank, which then you can use water pump to extract the water from and be able to dry camp so you don't have city water connection. Underneath the trailer here, just below all of that stuff, if you look right back here, you're gonna find your fresh water tank drain, just this valve right here. If you're gonna be putting this thing in storage or not using it for a while, you're gonna to wanna to turn that valve and drain that off. While we're under here, just behind that tank, you're gonna find your spare tire. Um, it does crank down, I'll show you how to crank that down. To crank down your spare tire, you're gonna use your uh, stabilizer crank handle, which is actually mounted right here under the bench. You can see they got a little cutout for it. And then it's held in place with two little Velcro straps right down here. So you just have to un-Velcro it and then you can fish it out. So your crank handle is gonna go right into this hole in the rear bumper. And let's see if we can get this thing might be useful to use a flashlight so you can match everything up in there that you need to because it is kind of difficult to see so there we go and then you can just crank that spare tire down just like on your vehicle most ve most cars have crank downs um, that you can do on there and then just crank it back up and that's it so that's how you do the spare tire. And then again, this just stores right back in this little cutout here and then re-Velcros for transport so it's not bouncing around beating up your nice cabinets in here that uh, Taxa has. So the rear door on this trailer is supported with gas struts right there on each side and uh, opens up pretty nice and smooth, closes well. Just has a handle here that has a deadbolt and a uh, paddle paddle lock on it for you. So pretty easy to open and close. Has a rear window on it that can be opened. So you can see here that you just undo these turn latches here and then this can be opened. And when it's open, all you gotta do is tighten down these little thumb wheels. And that's gonna keep your window open on this trailer. Uh, when you close the window, Make sure you support it so it doesn't slam shut. So the last thing that these windows have on them is gonna be a shade. Uh, so you've got a night shade, which is gonna be a privacy shade. It's gonna help block light um, and it's gonna keep people from being able to see into the trailer. The other way here is gonna be a uh, day shade or a bug screen. It's gonna minimize a little bit of the sun and the heat. Uh, it's gonna help keep the bugs out uh, but it's still going to allow plenty of, uh, a good amount of natural lighting and uh, breeze through it so you can, you know, naturally air out the trailer. While we're back here and we've got all this opened up, let me show you a couple things in the back end here. Um, so this is going to be your battery disconnect switch right here. This is under the off door side rear bench. You're going to find your battery disconnect switch. Very easy to use. All you have to do is turn it. Um, if it's in this position, it's turned off. This is turned on here where the battery is nice and flat and you can see everything. Now the rear bench, now the rear bench seats here are held back to the wall with little bungees. Um, so if you're getting in and out of them pretty regularly, you can bungee them up and it gets everything up and out of your way. So just to put them down, all you have to do is unbungee them and let them down. Just like that and then you've got your rear bench put back down so moving over here um, so you've got your roof access uh, steps on each side of the rear trailer which can give you access up here to the roof rack uh, you can carry some stuff up here so taxa does put some um, 
don't step, uh, tell you where to step. So they've got some anti-step markers here in the middle. So basically, if you're going to be up here walking on their roof, they want you walking on the edges or in the middle where everything is well supported. Um, and then you can strap down something up here, you know, whether it be some bikes or a kayak or something like that um, up here to your roof rack, which can be moved back and forth depending on where you need it for support. So they've got you equipped with a 12 volt accessory outlet out here just behind the uh, passenger side tire that you can plug in and run. Um, you can pull the refrigerator out, plug it in out here, still keep everything good and cold. Again, another check your wheel lug sticker here. Um, and that's gonna bring us kind of back here to our uh, entry door. So using our step to stow it, all you gotta do is lift up and then kind of give the back end kind of a push and that's gonna push it in like that and then it stores down. Uh, to get it out, just put, pick up in the front and pull straight out and just make sure it gets there nice and stable just like that. Now to uh, keep your entry door held open is going to be these two pieces here. They're going to mate up once we uh, open it up. And as you can see, all this does is push back and then they push into each other. You get a little bit of a pop on them sometimes. Um, and that's going to be what holds that entry door back and open for you. Um, so if you want some natural air coming in or you're going in and out pretty regularly, you can just prop it open. Now on the inside of your entry door, you've got another window. Um, so let me show you one other feature that these windows have, which is going to be kind of a ventilation feature. So if you see right here on all the uh, latch receivers, they have a middle groove. You can take and actually turn those down into the middle, and that's just kind of a ventilation for the window. It just props it open just enough. It's really good to use in like a rainy situation uh, where you still want some natural ventilation. You can turn the roof vent fan on and still pull a decent little breeze through the trailer. Again, your entry door is equipped with a uh, day and night shade for you there. Um, your entry door handle has a uh, deadbolt on it. So you can see our two features here. Uh, deadbolt's controlled by the red paddle lever. So that's how going to be how you lock your trailer while you're inside sleeping or hanging out in there. You can lock it up by using that. And then the paddle just moves the latch there for you on that. So this unit is equipped with the, um, the uh, bag awning up there. Uh, just unzips and comes out. It's pretty easy to use awning. Uh, check out some other videos on that. That pretty much covers the outside of the Cricut. Let's go check out the inside. All right, so just coming in the door of your Cricut here, uh, to the right, you're gonna find your fire extinguisher. Now, it's equipped with a gauge. It's gonna tell you as long as it's in the green, this thing should be good to go. Uh, it's going to be real simple use. If you've got to use it, you're going to pull the pin and squeeze the handle to uh, use the fire extinguisher. Now this cavity under here can be used to store various things. Uh, you may store a porta potty or just other stuff in there. Uh, but they do, Taxa does put their LPCO alarm back there in the back corner, as you can see. So just be aware that's back there. Um, if you put a trash can in there, or if you store your porta potty in there after it's been used, it may cause your alarm to go off. So just keep that in mind if that's where you're keeping that kind of stuff. Uh, just above that, we're going to have a couple of vents. This is going to be for your Truma. Uh, this is going to be for your Truma heater. It's where your hot air is going to come out and warm this trailer up. Just above that, we're going to have your WFCO power distribution panel. To get that open, all you got to do is push on it, and that lid's going to open up. On the left, you've got your 110 circuit breakers. And on the right, we've got your 12 volt fuses. Um, so they've got their stuff labeled here for you for the breakers. And then all your 12 volt fuses are standard blade type fuses you can acquire at pretty much anywhere if you need to get some, if you don't have any. Next to that, we've got your GFCI outlet. As you can see, it's got a uh, trip reset button on it. If the red light's on, that GFCI is tripped. Uh, the black button is going to be the reset and that light should go off. That should tell you that everything is working correctly. Next to that, we're going to have kind of your, uh, central hub of running all the lights or the majority of the lights. And we've got some more fuses and a room temperature sensor and some other things for the Truma. So just to get a couple things going, this is going to be your, uh, exterior patio light, which runs along the roof edge on the door side. 
Uh, that's why they show the light at the roof side. So this one here is going to be for the entry step. So they've got the light at the bottom of the house, which means entry step. And then this one here is going to be your uh, kitchen light, if you will, since it's primarily over the kitchen area there. And then our last one's going to be um, the water pump. So if you're going to be dry camping or you need to pull water from the water, fresh water tank, you're going to flip the uh, water switch or the water pump switch on there. That red light's going to be on. It's going to stay on anytime the water pump's running. And these are going to be the corresponding fuses for each of those features. Um, and then we've got your, um, this is going to be your Truma room temperature sensor. Taxa has equipped the Cricut with the Truma uh, heater slash water heater. So let me show you how to use the uh, control panel here. So right now we're in the off mode. If you're going to turn it off, you just have to long press the button and then it's going to shut off. But to turn it on, it's going to be the same thing. Just press the button here and it's going to bring you into your main screen, which is going to be your clock. So you can set the, t the time. To do that, all you've got to do is push this button and you can go down here to your clock, push it again, and then you can adjust your time to whatever time it is uh, to get everything going. And then once we get there, we can start doing everything else. So the caravan here is going to be our cabin temperature. So if you want to get that going, just select it there, push the button, then set your desired room temperature, uh, you know, all the way up to uh, 86 degrees. Then you would push it again. And then that's going to tell you, yeah, I'm on, I'm using gas and your fan speed over here on the right. So if you want to adjust your fan speed, scroll over to fan push the button and then you can select eco or high for that um, just the opposite to turn it off just scroll back to the caravan scroll this all the way down to off push it again and you can see everything turned off now the one next to that's going to be for the water heater so to use that you would just select it get it flashing push it again and then you can choose between eco hot and boost so if you need an extended runtime on hot water, you can put it in the boost mode. Uh, it's going to give you a little bit of additional time for some hot water. And then eco mode is just going to kind of be an energy con conservation mode. It's not going to um, get as hot there for you. And then you can select off again. Once you try to turn that on, push it again, you're going to tell you here you're in eco mode and it's using propane gas. Uh, to turn it off, just go back and turn it off. So this little icon right here is going to be a timer, so you can set this thing to start at whatever time of the day you would like, uh, where it's automatically going to kick on. And then the wrench over here is kind of a settings menu, where you can do like a cabin temperature offset. Uh, you can choose between Celsius or Fahrenheit, the brightness of the display screen, your clock formatting, uh, language, um, and then you can reset it. Uh, I think the indexing is like a model uh, programming of it kind of thing. So. And then to turn it off again, all you got to do is long press that button and let it shut off. Okay, and then next to that, we've got um, a 12 volt accessory port up top and two USB charge ports uh, down below. And one is a, uh, the top one's a one amp and the bottom one is a 2.1 amp uh, charge right there for your uh, USB charge ports. And then we've got some storage cubbies here. Uh, we've got a GFCI outlet over here on the far side of your uh, countertop. Again, we've got a couple of trim events down here down low. And then we've got this little area right here. Let me pull this cover off and I'll show you what's back here. So these are just little thumb screws. Uh, don't over tighten any of this stuff. You don't want it to strip out or anything. All right, so that's actually going to be access to your Truma. So not a whole lot in there for you as the consumer. That's going to be more for service type stuff. But just so you know, that's what's back there. Uh, water lines, gas line, all that kind of stuff going to your Truma system. All right, so moving up top here, uh, taxes using a combination sink and uh, two burner cooktop here for you with a glass uh, cover to give you some extra countertop space here. So all you got to do is open this thing up. And to use your faucet, uh, it's going to be this paddle here. Um, in and out is going to be for flow control. And then back and forth is going to be temperature control. If your paddle's all the way down towards the sink, that's going to be cold. And back towards the wall is going to be hot. 
Um, anytime you get ready to close all this down, do make sure both of these are pushed all the way flat as such. Now to do your uh, cooktop, to get this thing to light, all you've got to do is take your knob, turn it to the light position, should be facing up. You're going to push and hold that knob in, and then there's a little striker button in here. All you have to do is push it down, and it's got an automatic igniter on it. So all you have to do is let it go until you get lit. Let off the igniter, hold the button down for about another 5 to 10 seconds until you get a good flame established, and let off, and your flame should hold. Do your cooking, and then let everything cool down before you close your cooktop cover, and you're good to go there. They also have equipped you over here with a uh, storage rack for some knives, um, any other type of things that you could find a store in there for storage. All right, so moving just overhead here, we've got your vent fan. Get this thing to work, all we've got to do is crank it open. Once you get it open, this vent fan is actually capable to pull air out or into the trailer by using this selector switch. So it's got an arrow that shows you which way the air is going to go. So all you got to do is choose that. And then it's three speeds. Choose which speed you like best, uh, low, medium, high, or off, whichever works for you if you just want it open. And this is actually going to move a lot of air. So if you've got your windows open in this thing and this on, it's actually going to create a nice little breeze in here for you and uh, keep things comfortable. Now, Dometic equips their vent fans with a lid switch. So when you close the lid down, it's automatically going to shut the fan off so you don't have to remember to turn it off. Um, and then when you open it, it's automatically going to kick back on. So all of your uh, windows that are in the canvas portion of the Cricut are going to be um, either canvas or screen. There is no clear vinyl material in here. So you're either open or you're closed, basically. And these just store like a tent window, pretty much. Once you unzip them, you're just going to roll them up. And then they've got these little bungee straps here to keep them nice and neat and tucked out of the way. And that goes for all of the windows that are in the canvas area. Um, so let's move while we're talking about things up on the ceiling. Uh, Taxa is using a 9 volt smoke alarm in their trailers now. It's going to be 9 volt just like any, pretty much any other uh, smoke alarm in a trailer. Test it, make sure it works, replace the 9 volt battery as necessary. The uh, rest of the lighting in the, in the trailer here are controlled by these three switches right by the uh, refrigerator. So the first one here is going to be your main clear cabin lights right there in the middle. The uh, one below that is going to be the two little berth lights that are kind of back there in the back. And then the last one's going to be your red accent lighting that's right there in the middle. And that's going to be pretty much all the lights in this trailer. So these couple up here and these few right over here, and that's going to take care of all your lighting. Um, this, is a, this unit is equipped with an air conditioner. So this is going to plug into your GFCI outlet right here. Um, very simple, just plugs in. You'll see it's got a green light on it. So if that thing's tripped for some reason, that light will be off. You just got to push the reset button there. That green light should be on. And then basically you're going to choose your cooling speed or your cooling level and then uh, your fan speed here. So if we do max cool and we're going to turn this to high cool, that thing's going to kick on and uh, then you can kind of control your uh, flaps a little bit right here with the roller. That's going to just kind of direct your air either this way or more forward this way. Now this air conditioner does have a filter right here in the front that does have to be, you know, serviced periodically. You just have to fish it out of there. Be careful not to damage the plastic, bend it up or deform it or anything. It'll make it difficult for you to get it in and out later. Uh, just rinse it with some uh, mild soap, warm water, get all the crud off of it that builds, and let it air dry before putting it back in. And then you just have to manage to fish it back in over here. And just don't force it. Give it some time. Kind of work it back and forth. Let it get itself in there. So moving just below the air conditioner is going to be your um, refrigerator, the medic. 110 or 12 volt comes with both power cord options, 12 volt 
M110. These work really well. Um, Going to be your power button, your temperature control buttons here, and then your setting button for changing up different functions. If you're going to run it on 12 volt, the 12 volt accessory port for it is right back here behind the bench on the off door side. All you got to do is open that up and plug it right in and you're good to go. Your overhead uh, berths do have a weight limit of a max 130 pounds. Uh, so we have, whether you're using them for storage or kiddos, uh, maximum 130 pounds up here. Uh, they do just hang down like this and then you can see they just store up with the bungee cord. You just kind of wrap it around. It's going to hook into some of these holes that they have engineered up into the roof racks. So let me show you how to make your um, table area here down into a, an alternate or into your bed. So you've got to squeeze, push in this little thumb lever right here, and that's going to allow you to lift your tabletop off. And then there's a little button down here on the floor, this one right here, that you've got to push to release the uh, threads so you can un unscrew this one. And then under this bench, we're gonna find your little shorty one, which then will screw into the floor. Just snug it down and we're gonna take your big one and store it under here. And then your tabletop's gonna slide down onto that little shorty pole. And then we've got your little filler cushions here. And then come out and fill your cushion. Now we've got your bed area made and this is where the larger people generally will sleep. <laughs> uh, to take it up, it's just gonna be the opposite. You're gonna take your filler cushion, move it aside. Um, if you need to, you can tip up your, no, you can't. Okay. Cody, I would like to tell you that you're doing great. I am not, I'm not feeling it, man. So to take your table back up out of the bed position, you have to kind of reach under here and feel for that release for the tabletop. And you can get that to pop up there. And I'm just gonna slide that out of the way and show you a couple other things that we've got under the benches here. So we've got two more accessory ports here for 12 volt power, um, USBs again, 12 volt accessory outlet. And then right here, you're gonna see your 12 volt meter. It's actually going to be how much 12 volt power you've got going on inside the camper so you can kind of monitor your battery status if you are dry camping and then both of these benches can also be held up with the bungees and these legs can be stored out of the way if you need additional storage space and then these just loop back to the wall right here like that and then this one goes right here like that and then I can show you what's under these two spots right back here so we've got this larger one here it does say no storage but let me show you what's in here so you know what's in here again just remove these two thumb screws and you can lift that top off. And this is gonna be where your batteries mount or battery. Um, just gonna mount right here in the tray and we've got your cables in here that are gonna get all hooked up. Um, and then we've got your little power distribution panels back here in the back. So that's all that goes in here. Uh, it's not designed for storage. Don't be putting other things in there. Um, we don't wanna cause any kind of issues or anything like that. This little one here just gives us access to the backside of your uh, battery disconnect switch. Uh, so that's all that's underneath that cover there. And again, it's not for storage either. Now that we've got everything done on how the trailer works, let me show you how to uh, do the rooftop, um, stowing it for travel and then also putting it up uh, for camping. So uh, our, our, we're already up. Just remember, I'm showing you this with the lights on for the video purposes, but normally you're gonna make sure all your lights are off. You're gonna wanna have everything secured in here. Um, and ready to go. It's probably a good idea to zip up all your windows and everything on the canvas if you have them open. But let me show you this. It's really easy. All you got to do is grab this bar right here. You're going to pull it towards you. And that's actually going to pull this roof all the way down. Once you get it to drop down, you're going to come outside. 
We're going to grab this handle right here on the front of the trailer. Pull it all the way down and then push this latch into here until it latches. And then we're going to pin it like so. Once we get that done, <clears throat> we're going to go back inside the trailer. And there's two more latches that we've got to do in here. So once we get in here, there's gonna be a latch, one right by the entry door and the other one across the wall um, that locks. You have to push this thumb release right here to get it to open up. And it's gonna to go to this D loop that's right here by the canvas. And then all you have to do is snap this down and push that thumb latch again. This thing should lock to the wall as such. Again, there's one right there by the uh, entry door that you're gonna do the same thing with. just like that. And that's gonna get your rooftop secured for travel. Now remember all these little bungee cords that are attached to the canvas are to help pull that canvas in so you don't have to go around and tuck the canvas as you put the roof down. So deploying the roof for camping, it's just the opposite. All we've gotta do is undo these latches. Come outside, undo the uh, front piece here. Just pull your pin out. I like to keep this right here just so you don't lose it. Um, pull down on this and then you have to, this is gonna take a couple of fingers here. Push that back out of the way so you can push that latch. This latch has to swing back so you can get this out. And then get your roof started. Once it gets started, we're gonna go back inside. And again, all you gotta do is grab this bar push until it pops into place and that's it now your roof is up and you're ready to finish setting up for camping thanks again for hanging with us as we went through the uh, taxa outdoors cricket and again this is cody with princess craft rv